I was set up. I did not do it. Bounce from town to town like rubber checks. Bagel. Johnny Vega. Didn't know at the time I'd pay double for the crime. Not to mention a serious problem Johnny. with the opposite sex. I'm his ex wife. I guess that's friggin' that. Like an anchovy to an alley cat. Johnny Bagel's gonna have to stay a little further down the lost highway. You see, that's friggin' that. Talking to a big old diplomat. Johnny Bagel's gonna have to stay a little further down the lost highway. A little further down the lost highway. Vanessa, tell me that's not her. It's her. It can't be her. We just got rid of her. Come on, Lemsky. Let me see the stick. It's her. Okay, you were right. It is her. You deal with her. Who's the dead mook? Is that Johnny? Sorry to disappoint you, Florio, but that's not your ex-husband. And if you hear about him, I can't give you any more information now than I didn't give you an hour ago. Look, I'm a little bit busy. Why don't you go and uh, get your hair done or something? Tell me something, Venezia. Does wearing ripple-soled shoes make you this stupid? I got it. Look, I'm offering my full-time services, okay? Just give me a car, expenses, some ammo, and I'll bring the worm in myself, and you'll never have to see me again. Wait here. Captain, how about if we borrowed Florio from Corrections, deputized her in the homicide, and let her track Johnny Tenuti? Deputized? You can't do that. She's a psycho. Captain, she's been asking for your home telephone number. On the other hand, nobody can beat her dedication. Call her over here. Okay, Florio, you get your special assignment. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You won't regret this. Believe me, I won't eat, I won't sleep until Johnny is back behind bars. Believe me, he won't last five minutes out on the road. The bum's never been out of the neighborhood except to go to jail. How's he gonna survive? What's he gonna do for money? talking about well I see you keep moving the wrong way in line they take blood from me all the time when they're about to prick me I just look out the window at a cute little squirrel or something well thanks for the tips sweetheart but uh, I don't need to be looking for any rodents because I am not afraid okay okay but I do got a little advice for you though a nice little girl like you shouldn't be wasting her time reading a trashy paper like this I was reading Something really interesting. Yeah, but don't pay no attention to it. It's all garbage. Did you know Princess Di is going to marry Wayne Newton? Are you putting me on? Where's it say that? Daricelli, although the man who killed your son has for the moment escaped, please understand, I guarantee you this vendetta will be satisfied. I understand this, Vincenzo, but I'm not sure Chicho does. Chicho? These are his ashes. Explain to Chicho why this Johnny Tenuti still lives. Oh. <clears throat> well, uh, you see, Chicho, he's been traveling around in an RV. Chicho doesn't understand this thing, an RV. Oh. Well, it's, uh, you live in it. It's like a bus or something. Uh, tell Chicho. It's like a linen truck with beds in it. 
Yeah, that's what it is, Cheech. A linen truck with beds. Anyway, he goes wherever he wants in this vehicle, and so far we have not been able to locate him. But we will. Ooh. We will. I promise you, we will. As a matter of fact, I got our best man on this. Frankie. I'm honored, Don Roselli. <laughs> Frankie! Frankie, five belters! <laughs> Chicho, you always liked him. His gas made you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you, my Don, Johnny Tenuti will not be so amused, eh? Excuse yourself. <laughs> Last chance, pale face. Fifty bucks. Going once. Going twice. Take an empty cot and answer the questions for me. Okay, sir, I'm just going to hang this bag up. Dr. Crouch, Dr. Crouch. Uh, nurse, I have a question here. It says, uh, in the last five years, have you had unprotected sex? Uh, does that mean with another person? Yeah, I guess it does. So you're gonna take a finger full, right? Fifty bucks for a finger full? <laughs> I don't think so. I need a big blue vein. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. What now? I need to find a cute little squirrel. You sure you're not a drug abuser? Well, well, something's making the blood pump. Well, if it's romance you're looking for sport, you'd have better luck finding that cute little squirrel. That one wouldn't know what to do with a red-blooded man like you. Is that all mine? Oh, that's an awful lot of blood, Doc. Well, can we just tap it off right here, and I'll take 25 bucks. I'll take 15. Oh, hell, I'll take... A little nap. Oh, mommy, I fell down. This is the guy that everybody's been looking for. Go tell the sheriff and the mayor. I'll try to keep Johnny Bagel here. Johnny Bagel? That's not my name. It's not? That's what it says on your fishing license right here. Who's Johnny Bagel? I am. Johnny, why don't you relax and stay for a nice glass of orange juice and some cookies? What is this, a hospital or the friggin' kindergarten? I just want my money! Now, calm down, Johnny. You can have your money. I'll go and get it right now, okay? like invasion of the freaking body snatches. Howdy. Is there a problem? Uh, no, sir, there's, uh, no problem. That, uh, vehicle belonged to you? Uh, well, kinda. Actually, it, uh, belonged to a friend of mine. Somebody just drove off in your friend's RV and there's no problem? Yeah, they could take it for a spin, uh, it's okay, really. Well, you're quite an unusual fellow, Johnny Bago. You know my name, too. Oh, come on now, Johnny. Important fellow like you shows up in a little burg like ours. That kind of news travels fast, very fast indeed. I'm gonna have to insist that uh, you hop in. No, no, come on, sit up front here with me. Front? Yeah, I only put the dangerous criminals back there. Not that we've ever had any of those in Appleview, at least not so far.
Now, Johnny, you're probably wondering, what's my timber doodle doing parked up here by this beautiful lake? Well, as a matter of fact, I was, among a few other things. Well, your keys kind of fell out of your pocket back at the clinic, and we just figured we'd move it for you. Now, Johnny, I don't know where you're heading, but I can't imagine it being any prettier than it is right here. Well, well, it, it is very pretty. Well, listen, Sheriff, if I was to keep on heading where, where I was heading, I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd be free to head there, wouldn't I? <laughs> we parked you in a good luck spot. Last man to use that spot was a fellow invented the butter chip pickle. You know those little sweet ones they serve you with the tuna fish sandwiches out there on the turnpike? Why, why didn't you just leave it where it was? Well, we kind of wanted to show off our town. You being new blood, so to speak. You ran off in such a hurry we were never properly introduced. I'm Roberta Thompson. My friends call me Bobby. What the hell is this? Your $50. Plus little interest for your trouble. <laughs> I'm Jack Welch, the banker and the mayor of Appleview, PA. I'd like to welcome you personally, Mr. Johnny Bago, to our humble hamlet. <laughs> People! Oh, yes. oh. Now, Johnny, for your home and workshop, from our very own Hank's Hardware and Things, a ratchet set. <laughs> Tell us a little about yourself, Johnny. Do you have a mom? Yeah, of course I got a mother. I got a mom, isn't that wonderful? And to remind you of your dear old mom, we have from Newton's Knitting, your very own handmade sweater. Mayor always wanted to be a game show host. Oh, there's got to be some kind of mistake. Oh, there's no mistake. The lab checked it twice. I mean, there's no mistake about how we feel about you here in Appleview, is there? Not at all. Really? Really? Everyone? Let's treat him like he's got half a brain in his head, shall we? Hey, you're that great-looking nurse at the hospital. I am a doctor. Dr. David is a world-famous surgeon. Dr. David? Well, you look very good in a man's name there, Dr. David, I must say. <laughs> Mr. Bago, the reason for all this is we've discovered your blood is AB negative. AB negative? Mm. AB negative? AB negative? That's not possible! I I've been freaking something for five years! Would you please try to act mature? AB negative is your blood type. Oh. It's very rare. We've been searching for months for someone like you. We have a patient who desperately needs a bone marrow transplant. You could be the donor. Donor? We just need a tiny bit, Johnny. We'll make sure you're comfortable. I think you'll find that Appleview can be a very friendly place. How friendly are we talking? Friendly, friendly, friendly. I don't know. Let me get this straight. I, uh, I get all this stuff here. And all you want from me is this uh, stuff you call bone marrow? That's it. That's right, Johnny. Okay. Oh! Oh! oh. I mean, uh, bone marrow's like uh, a sabuco. <laughs> What a nice plate of soup, sweetheart. No, thanks, Mom. I'm sort of here on business. That's right. Isn't that? Yeah, uh, I don't know if anybody told you, but I'm a police officer now, and... Oh, you know, now that you mention it, I do remember hearing something about that. <laughs> yeah. How about a nice piece of budino de pane carmelato? No, thanks. Uh, Ma, I just came by to see if you heard from Johnny. Johnny? Johnny? You know, your son, my ex. Oh, you mean that, Johnny? You know, he's on the lam. Excuse me. Hello. Hello, Ma. Hey, how are you? Uncle Louie. How nice of you to call. Ma, what are you talking about? It's me, Johnny. Is somebody there with you? That's all right, Unc. Uh, Johnny's ex-wife, Beverly. And you remember her. Beverly's there with you? What the hell does she want? Hey, what do you think she wants, huh? She's a cop. So she's either looking for a free meal or a free date from the call-out service. By the way, Uncle Louie, 
Where are you calling me from? Hey, you sound so close. Well, believe it or not, Ma, I'm in a place called Appleview. <laughs> Appleview, Pennsylvania. You okay? Are you kidding me, Ma? I am having the time of my life. I mean, these people think I'm a freaking hero. And, and they keep giving me all this, this merchandise and everything. And I, and I don't even think it's hot. As a matter of fact, I'm talking to you on one of them, uh, them secular phones as we speak. Hey, Ma, this is gonna make you happy. I, uh, I met a woman. He met a woman? A professional woman. She's a doctor. As a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to see her right now. You're gonna see a doctor, Uncle Louie? Hey, don't forget, you get a second opinion. Oh, come on, Ma. I really think you're gonna like this one. I really do. All right, here comes a kiss. Mwah! I love you, Ma. <laughs> yeah, I love you too, Uncle Louie. Uncle Louie. I always liked him. I cried and cried at his funeral seven years ago. Okay, he's dead. You don't speak ill of the dead. That's why I was so nice to him on the phone. That was Johnny. How about that Johnny? <laughs> Did he surprise everybody or what? <laughs> That's for sure. Where is he? I want to know. Oh, now you want to know everything about Johnny. Ain't that ironical? If you had given him the support when you were married, he could have been in this position years ago. But no. You were too busy stuffing that big fat face of yours. Up. You black-hearted old bag! You're the reason our marriage went to pieces. You encouraged him to be a moron! Oh, I prayed, I prayed. Please, don't let him have a child by this woman. And you know what? <laughs> there is a God. Well, believe it or not, Ma, I'm in a place called Appleview. <laughs> Appleview, Pennsylvania. You okay? So, you're in Pennsylvania, huh? I've always wanted to go to Pennsylvania. Right, Doctor. Excuse me, Doctor, but a patient would like to see you. I'm right in the middle of Agnes's final blood analysis. I can't see anybody right now. Oh, I think this patient you want to see. Johnny? Hey, how you doing, Doc? Uh, you got a second? Uh, well, actually, I don't. So, if you don't mind, Mr. Vega. No, no, call me Johnny, please. Listen, um, I don't want to take you from your, uh, hypocritical oath or anything like that, but I just want to show you some of the things that the people in town got for me. Uh, look, Mr. Vega, just so we're clear, I don't approve of you accepting these gifts in return for what should be a normal act of human compassion. These aren't for me, silly. These are for you. For me? Yes. Well, isn't that nice of Johnny? Close your eyes. Okay, open them. Huh? Are these beauties? Oh, my. All right, hold your applause, Donna. The best is yet to come. Huh? Oh, this is uh, the dress that goes along with the rest of the assemble, as they call it. Just where am I supposed to be seen in this assemble, as they call it? Uh, you, you're gonna be seen with me, of course. I mean, uh, I'm gonna cook for you, and uh, after the candles burn down, I figure maybe me and you could play a little doctor, if you know what I mean. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> look at me. What do I look like? Is this a trick question? Well, I'll give you three guesses. I'm not a cheap exhibitionist, and I'm not a streetwalker. So what does that leave us with? A woman? I'm a doctor, you idiot. Do you think that I would actually dress up in cheap clothes and have an assignation with a clown like you? Well, that all depends on what assignation means. Oh. Oh. Can I have a word with you? Wait here. Just what is the matter with you, girl? Absolutely nothing is the matter with me, Nurse Bobby. Well, that ain't my prognosis. No, ma'am. A nice-looking man like him comes by with some hot new clothes and starts talking that sweet talk, and you jam on him like that? 
There's something about that man that I don't trust. Mm. I know exactly what it is, too. He's a man. You gotta stop putting men under that microscope of yours. I'm interested in Mr. Bago for one reason and one reason only. To allow me to perform the operation. Understand? I understand that this is the only man within 2,000 miles that has an RH factor that matches Agnes's. We've been searching for this donor for six months and time is running out. Yeah, girl, if I were you, I'd be real nice to Mr. Bagel. Or you might not have an operation to perform at all. Dr. David, what are you doing here? You invited me for dinner, don't you remember? Yeah, I remember, but I thought you said you couldn't make it. Well, I did make it. Aren't you going to invite me in? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Where's my manners? Come on in. Oh, this is a trailer? No, actually, this is a Class A motorhome. Is that Tosca? No, no, this is Pagliacci. You remember, the clown. Okay, maybe I was a bit abrupt at the hospital, but I mean, I have a lot of important things on my mind. I'm sure you can understand. I never meant to be rude to you. She's apologizing. Well, trying to anyway. I, uh, well, as you've probably noticed, I'm wearing the clothes you gave me. I thought you didn't like them. Well, uh, actually, your generosity just caught me by surprise, that's all. And if I forgot to thank you for this lovely little bracelet, thank you. The bracelet's supposed to go on your ankle. My ankle? Uh, look, Doc, I know you don't want to stay here, so, um, I'm gonna make it real easy for you. I accept your apology, thanks for coming by, and, uh, well, you can go home if you want to. I can? Sure. Oh, no. I mean, even though I don't know another soul in town, I'm not gonna make somebody have dinner with me who doesn't want to have dinner with me. I mean, the only reason I'm here is just to... Help you people out. No. I'd like to have dinner with you. May I stay? Well, if you insist, okay. What are you cooking for dinner? Well, you kind of caught me off guard. It's just a... Uh... I'm cooking a little something for myself. I hope this is enough. Could I do something to help? Well, after I'm done cooking, you can start by amputating this leg of lamb, Dr. David. Uh, since this is some sort of a date, maybe you shouldn't be calling me Dr. David all night. Huh. Okay, how about um, Dr. Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my first name is Candace. Okay, well, let's begin. Um, Candy? Okay. Spoon. Spoon. No, no, no. I need a wooden spoon. Wooden spoons. I'm meant for tasting. Mm. Very good. Okay, clams. Clams. Garlic? Garlic. No, 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 no. You don't put garlic into soup. You gotta use a flat end of a knife. Like this. Bang, see? 
okay? A little wine? Oh, wine. No, no, no. This is for drinking. Oh. She's drinking now. She wouldn't have a glass of port in the part cheesy game. Okay, uh, here's to... Agnes. Who? Agnes, the bone marrow recipient. Oh, yeah, her Agnes, right. Salute. You really are a marvelous cook. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I was thinking about becoming a chef when I got out of the, um, the army. And so now I just kind of do it for my own enjoyment. Mm. So in other words, it's your passion. Well, if you want to call it that, yeah, I guess. Must be nice to have a passion. I never have the time to do anything else but my work in the hospital. You know I was married once. Really? And my husband and I had a deal. If I helped put him through med school, he'd help me. But the first thing he did when he became a doctor was he ran off with a 28-year-old renal specialist. A what? Oh, kidneys. Ooh. Anyway, I put myself through medical school, and it wasn't easy. I had little interest or time to pursue anything else but my career. I guess I'm a bit of a social misfit. I don't know how to do anything. Just cook, drive a car, ski, dance. Well, I don't know much about skiing either, but um, I know a little bit about dancing. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Uh, pretend you're my partner. Okay, come on. Okay. All right, a little music. Okay, so uh, it's very simple. All you do is uh, you just kind of, you know, get a little comfortable with each other. Start uh, shuffling your feet around. Like, like this? That's very good. Just like that. Yeah, very good. Now, for those more advanced dancers, you, you kind of grind into each other like this. Oh, looks like Johnny's got things under control real good. Well, I better get away from this window before I have to rest myself for peeping. Mm. Must be nice to be able to indulge your passions the way you do, Johnny. Well, there must be something that winds your clock, huh, Candy? Mm. Well, there is something, I suppose. Yeah? Like what? I love performing procedures. Really? Mm. The one I'm going to do with you? It's going to be a beauty. I'm listening. Well, first, we'll put you gently to sleep. I know what I'm going to be dreaming about. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll rotate her iliac crest. That's these, right here. Oh, rotate them, rotate them. Then, I use this thing called an aspirator, and I'll gently scrow, and scrow, scrow. Yeah? A tiny little hole in your cortex. Then, I'll withdraw approximately 20 to 50 millimeters of red marrow with a long, thin needle. A needle? It's called a stylet. It's really a lance. It looks something like this. Oh, jeez. Oh, well, that's quite a passion you got there, uh, Doc. Um, which reminds me, that I should really get some rest before this operation, so I, I, I think I should hit the sack. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. I was having such a good time. I know, me too, but... Oh, I guess it must be time to go. Yeah, it's definitely time to go. Well, uh... Good night. Well, good night. No, buddy. Not even a beautiful broad is sticking some damn railroad spike into my hip. That's for damn sure. First thing tomorrow morning, I am out of here. 
Well, that went pretty well. Morning, Johnny. Morning, Sheriff. What uh, brings you here? Oh, I just came up to say good morning. Bring a cup of coffee. Are you going somewhere? Huh? You going someplace? Oh, uh, they, they did a really good job on the uh, angle here, you know, uh, new tires and all. I was just going to take it out for a little test spin. Well, uh, you be careful. Because we don't want anything to happen to you before that operation this afternoon. Ain't nothing gonna happen to me, Sheriff. Bye now. Probably not. Well, maybe we can do it again sometime. I mean, once you recover. Recover? Recover? Appleview. Appleview? Where the hell is Appleview? Did I miss it? Maybe I blinked. Is everybody happy? I tell you, I'm proud to be mayor of this town. Proud. <laughs> the clouds have parted. The sun is shining. And dear little Agnes is going to have her whole life to look forward to. Yeah! Yeah! And we owe it all to one man. Yeah! He's selfless, brave, a great man, a great American, and with a great haircut. <laughs> I give you Johnny Bago! I, uh, I, 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 I just want to say, thanks for the stuff. Thank you, Johnny, for those touching words. I know they came straight from your heart. <laughs> now let's see what Pulaski's Polk and Kielbasa Society has to say about you. <laughs> Now, Johnny, there's somebody I think you should meet. Mr. and Mrs. Campbell and their granddaughter, Agnes. That's Agnes? Thank you, Johnny, for all you're doing. Wait a minute. Agnes is supposed to be some old bag with corn cushions in her shoes. More like her. It's the only Agnes we got, and we aim to keep her. <laughs> That's fine. We'll leave you two alone to talk. Hi, Johnny. Hi. We met before, remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I just didn't know you were going to turn out to be Agnes. 
and I didn't know you were going to be the one to save me. I prayed for someone like you to come, and you did. You're my angel. You think I'm an angel? Well, it just shows you when you grow up in a town like this, you get nothing but a distorted viewpoint of reality. Agnes hasn't smiled like this in months. And Johnny Vega is one in a million. <laughs> Dr. Davis says thanks to you, I'm going to have my whole life ahead of me. Isn't that wonderful? I got some news for you. This whole having your life ahead of your routine isn't really what it's cracked up to be. I mean, if you really think about it, life is just one big disappointment starting from the minute they slap you on the keister. I mean, if you really think about it, what do you, what do you got to look forward to? You, you get acne and then you get a broken heart. And you got taxes and divorce. And your kids put you in some old folks home and you start wetting your diapers and you die choking on a chicken bone or some damn thing. I mean, I mean, who needs it? <laughs> What's so funny? You are. so good. I'm not so good at all. Listen, I was thinking maybe we should just postpone the operation. Because uh, I, I really think I'm coming down with something. I don't know, I, I probably caught a draft, you know, from this little bib I wear. You're probably a little nervous, Johnny. I've got something to make you relax. That's supposed to relax me? Johnny, don't be a baby. Yeah, I did. I'll be up in a few minutes. Now that's a good boy. Oh. Oh. Hey, nurse. Nursey. I'm a doctor. Whatever. What do you want? I want him. That's Johnny Bago, my bone marrow donor. That's Johnny Tenuti, my murderer. Murderer? No, no, it can't be. It must be some mistake. I was with him last night. Linguini and clams. What? A little wine. A little opera. Dancing lessons. You know Johnny. I was married to him until he ran out on me. Thanks a lot. He ran out on you? That's right. All the way to prison. That goes on your ankle, by the way. Where is the little weasel? I want to find him before he runs out again. Oh, Nurse Bobby, have you seen Mr. Bago? Uh, that wonderful man's in this room. That wonderful man is a murderer. No way. Not Johnny. It's got to be a different guy. Very good. He's gone. It's the same man, all right. We've got to find him. I've got an operation to perform. He couldn't have gotten that far after the shot I gave him. I'm happy to hear, hear that. Was that Frankie Five Belches? Who? Of course. Roselli sent him to hit Johnny. We better find Johnny before he does it. You'll be digging bone marrow out of a corpse. Oh, man, I gotta give you a prescription of this stuff. Freaking hallucinating when I see Frankie Five Belches. Johnny? 
Agnes! Where are you going? I don't know. Canada? Mexico, maybe? You're always trying to cheer me up. Can I tell you a secret? Mm-hmm. I am a little scared. Well, listen, Agnes. There's nothing to be scared of, because you told me yourself. All you gotta do is keep your eye on the little squirrel. Well, nurse, I let you talk me into going out with a man, and he turned out to be an ex-convict wanted for murder. On the other hand, you said he was a good dancer. Yeah, well, I was a fool. Oh, I should have expected he'd run out on us just when we needed him most. Johnny's so funny. Think happy thoughts, Agnes. You found him. Ooh. I don't think you'd be needing that. He's unconscious. You'd be surprised the stuff Johnny can pull when he's unconscious. This is a sterile environment. If you're worried about the gun, I, I just cleaned it. Officer Florio, right now, I'm going to take this man's bone marrow. When I'm finished, you can do whatever you want with him. All right. If you need me, I'll be right outside. You didn't mean that. You ain't gonna let her have him. The only person I care about now is Agnes. But Johnny did the right thing. He stuck around to help her. Nurse Thompson, we've got an operation to perform. That's all that's important now. I'm going to need 20 cc's of Demerol, nurse. Agnes, the operation was a complete success. You're gonna live a long and healthy life. How are you feeling? I'm okay. How's Johnny? How's the donor? Is he dead? As soon as the sedative wears off, he'll be fine. Not for long. We're a lot alike, you know? Both professional women. Your work's your life, so is mine. Totally driven, totally obsessed. And we both hate Johnny. It's no way to live. Look, if you want to go on Sally and Jesse Raphael together, fine. But right now, I'd like to take my criminal. What the hell is this? <laughs> Are you God? God? Oh, heaven's sakes, no. I'm Mary Welsh, remember? Oh, you're gonna be fine, Johnny. That's a nasty condition you've got there. Maybe we should give that hiatal hernia a snip. Might alleviate that belching. How's the girl? Oh, she's gonna be fine, too. Right now, you gotta get out of town. People are after you. Oh, it's too late. He's got me. I'm not gonna get you. I'm gonna get you out of here. Of course, I'm gonna have to deny it. It's not a good career move for a sheriff to help a murderer escape. I didn't do nothing, Sheriff. I was set up. Well, we believe you, Johnny. You don't have to say another word. This crazy broad did it. He had these chunglers that blotted out the sun and his tattoo like jacking a beanstalk and it wrapped around her ankle and came up a leg and disappeared in between her. Yeah? Sheriff. Right, right. Come on. We gotta get you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> think he's okay to drive? Dear Ma, you know me better than anybody. And ain't it true that my whole rotten life I never done nothing good for nobody? Well, maybe that ain't so true no more. It's a long story, but let me just say this. If I ever do make my bones, they're gonna be a little light on the marrow, which I guess is good news for a little girl in Appleview, Pennsylvania.
Isn't it amazing what those doctors can do these days? Now, if they could only find a cure for being framed, I'd be lucky. Frank! <sighs> Who bother framing nothing like Tanuri? Boss, we got it on videotape. The gun is smoking in his hand. I mean, come on, really. But at least now, Agnes has a future. I wish I could say the same thing about myself under the present circumstances. It's kind of hard to make plans. Because the thing about the road, Ma, is that you never know where it's going to take you. I'm just hoping the next town I get stuck in, they don't need a brain. Love, Johnny.